It's that time of the week again. Match review. If you guys don't know what match review is, basically, you guys send me matches that you either win or lose. You can be in any grade. You can be a boy or a girl. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be good. It just has to be three periods, and the video should be at least, like, four minutes long. I need to, or, like, you know what I mean? It has to be, like, kind of long for me to review it. There have to be, like, there has to be content for me to critique. Today, we're reviewing Dominic Rivera. You can check out his Instagram right here. He's a ranked wrestler from Illinois, or Illinois. I don't know if you guys want me to say the S or not. Someone said something about it last time I said that. But he's a ranked wrestler from Illinois, and he loses this match just from, like, some pretty, like, simple to correct mistakes. Like, it's, like, the concepts that he missed were pretty simple, but, like, they cost him the match. You know what I mean? They're little, small details that cost him the whole match. But first, if you guys like my video, you like my content, you guys want to support me, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. You doing that helps get my name out there and it helps expose me more to YouTube and the more I'm exposed in YouTube then the quicker I can start doing the things I want to do. I want to start like a wrestling club, I want to vlog my MMA training, I want to I want to do a bunch of stuff and it'll be really cool. Just like help me out, share this video. I'm thinking about starting a Patreon since I'm small and like I make no money. Like I, I got ads put on my videos but I get paid like very little compared to like the amount of work that I put into these videos. So if you guys would be down to support me with Patreon let me know and I might make one. But if you guys hate it, then like, I won't do it. But let's just jump right into it, guys. Okay. So line up, you have a good stance right here. All right, so right there. In the first like four seconds, you start off with a good stance. You shake hands with a good stance. The second he blows the whistle, you straighten your leg, okay? And let's see what happens when you straighten your legs against an aggressive wrestler, against a good wrestler. Okay, look, he sees your straight leg, and boom, he goes straight for the single leg. You see what happened? If you get lazy in a match, right, you decide to strain your legs, a good wrestler is going to take advantage of that. In practice, you need to maintain a low stance at all times when you're not in contact, right? When you're not in contact, you should immediately go back to a very low stance with your chest six to eight inches from your knee. Okay, this will stop them from taking your leg like this because since you were standing you didn't have the reaction time to actually get to sprawl or put your hands there. He was just already lower than you and he just had to shoot. He didn't even set up really. Next, he picks your foot up high, right? You have a whizzer in and it like, I don't know if he tripped you, but it looks like you tried to funk roll. It looks like you tried to funk roll and you completely eat shit. Like you do the funk roll completely wrong. With a funk roll, you can't keep the whizzer in. You need to... And I will immediately throw this hit back. And then what I want to do is belly down as quick as I can and doing, during that process, pull this leg over my chest. So watch my hands. I drop, I throw my leg back, we hit. Now we're here. Now what my opponent's going to do is attempt to stay on top of me. He's going to feel comfortable putting me on my back in this position. And now I want to scoop that leg. I got one hand behind the thigh. I might go up to the ankle or I might stay at the knee. Depends on the pressure of the reaction from this guy. And now I pull and I take him over and I continue to roll and as I roll, I'm wrapping this foot under my armpit, and now when I get belly down, I want to get weight on that foot that he's attacking. So I've gotten belly down, I start coming through the back door, I start getting my height, now I'm going to change hands, weight on that foot, and I'm going to drive him off that leg. Um, I wasn't really good at hitting a funk roll because like, I don't know, I was better at whizzering and like hopping out and bringing it to the mat and then sliding my knee out. And I haven't drilled it a lot. I, like I can't say I've hit it in a match because that's a pretty ballsy move because like when you do it wrong, this is what happens. You got put straight to your back. Don't try and hit a funk roll. Don't try and do a new defense if you don't know how to hit it. Maybe you practice this a lot. If that's the way you practice it, then you have shitty partners. You need to find, you need to look up on YouTube how to do it. There's a ton of videos. Ben Aspen has a really good video. And and you need to perfect that shit. So look, you get put to your back. You do a good job rolling out. And now something that this kid does uh, really good is as soon as he feels resistance from you, as soon as he feels resistance, he goes for, at first he goes for a cross face cradle. He feels too much resistance. He hops sides while still on top of your hips, while still pressuring your hips. He cross faces the other side and he goes for a Turk, right? When he feels too much resistance with that, he goes for an, a far side cradle. And what's happening is basically 
He's trying to beat you to where you're thinking, you know what I mean? And when that's happening, when shit's going down, right? When he's like attacking your legs and he's cross facing you and doing stuff like that, when he's trying to turn you like that without any control of your arms really, the first thing you need to think of the first thing you need to think of is where is his arm, okay? Because that's what you can control. That's like that's how you can manipulate him, okay? With your hips and your legs, if he's trying to pull your leg to a cradle or he's trying to turk you or he's trying to whatever western hook, you have to think resist with your hips, resist with your hips, just try and keep your hips flat on the mat and like resist like him trying to turn you because if he turns your hips over, you're kind of screwed. And with your hand, you need to grab, grab his far arm, right? So he's gonna have, one arm on this side and he's gonna cross face you, he's trying to cradle you or he's trying to lift the leg up. The hand that's cross facing you, right? You wanna get a hold of that with both of your hands and put it on the other side. Much easier said than done, but it is possible, okay? Yet You just need to calm down and focus. You can't be thinking in this moment like I'm getting the shit beat out of me. You have to think, okay, how do I control this kid? The cross face is the constant, really. He keeps on cross facing you. It doesn't look like he really goes, like maybe he grabs wrists a little bit, but he goes right back to that cross face. He's trying to turn you. He locks up the cradle, okay? When he locks up a cradle, he's like this. He's got the top hand over, like the hand that's on your head over, and the hand that's under your leg under. Okay, you always need to attack the top hand, the hand that's on top, okay? You always need to attack it because when you break the grip, this hand is gonna go far away from you and you're probably gonna lose it. If you, if you attack the hand that's on top, like this, if you attack the hand that's pushing your face and you control it, that's something that you, like that's control that you can get, that you can use to get out. Right, once you put his head on the other side, then you can work on like sliding your hips to the other side or getting to your base and you can start wrestling. And you like you kind of eliminate one of his like like his pressure, you know what I mean? He like he has to worry about getting his arm back instead of turning you. You got back points. And notice how he stays on top of his hips. The whole time, his hips are right on top of Dominic's. He keeps on going for that Turk. You see, as soon as one move fails, he hops to another one. As soon as, like, he knows when he's feeling too much resistance, and he just switches from one to another, to another, to another, to another. Right, this is what good wrestlers do. He's trying to turn you to his back, to your back, but you're resisting good. You're getting back points. See right here, I've I've been in this position a million times where you're just getting the shit kicked out of you, and like you really like you're just worried about resisting. But you need to calm down, and you have to know that you have to like you're just trying to get gain control of an arm and you have to resist with your hips, right? Your top side needs to control something. You need to get both hands on one arm. And it's pretty hard. It's not, this isn't an easy thing to do. That's the end of that period. Chooses bottom. All right, now notice what this kid does immediately. All right, the ref standing in front of him. But the first thing this kid does is he gets his hips out from under Dom, all right? Dominic, get like, I think he has a western hook and he's like riding high on his, like, on his torso. Like he's up, like, up on his chest instead of near his hips. You, when you're on top, your objective is to create as much friction with your opponent as possible. You wanna keep your hips on top of his. You need to control him that way. If, like, like you see right here, if his hips get out, if his hips get out, Right, you can be holding on to his top side as much as you want, but he'll get out, right? And then right back. The second he gets out, he maintains that pressure, right? The second he gets out, he maintains the pressure. You stand up, you're not used to keeping that pressure. You just stand up because you think like, oh, he's gonna take a break. But this kid doesn't take any breaks. This kid's a good wrestler. He level changes and shoots the second he sees your knees straighten out. And he takes you back down. Okay, so look. With this takedown, he goes straight for the takedown. He's got your ankle. 
you got that wizard and you let him get high and then he trips you. You, like your objective, when he's got that single leg high, is to get this leg, like is to get your opposite leg as far away from him as possible. Okay, you're trying to widen your base as much as possible. If you have to take it to the mat, then take it to the mat. Like if you have to put your knee to the mat to like get him, get the leg as far away as possible, then do that. But maintain that wizard because the wizard is what's stopping him from getting the takedown. You're trying to get your ankle as far away from him as possible. And if you jump and hop to your knee, you can use your body weight as like, kind of like a lever to pull him to the ground and like kind of loosen his grip. It's kind of hard and you have to be, you have to like be an athlete to do that. But like, if you got the wizard, you jump and like you try to stretch this leg out as far as possible. Okay, so that if you're perfect at it, you end up in almost like a split, okay? You're trying to keep that leg as far away from your opponent as possible. All right, but he takes you down and then he goes for a near side cradle. He gets back points. Oh no, he didn't get back points, but he went out of bounds. You go back down and then look, when he's on top of you, he stays on your hips. He's got good pressure on your hips the whole time. He catches your arm, breaks you down flat, and he just keeps on going for that cradle. If you knew to focus on resist with your bottom side and try to control something with your top side, this wouldn't be happening, right? If you focus on getting two hands onto his hand, because two hands always beats one, right? If you focus on getting two hands onto his one hand and putting it on the other side, then you can get to your base. And like, he's gonna be worried about getting this arm back instead, because he won't be able to turn you with one arm. That was a good match. If you like that video, if you like my content, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I try to post a new video Monday through Friday, but I don't always get to it. But if you guys want to support me, if you guys think I should start a Patreon, comment down below so I can just speed up the process of me like actually becoming a professional at this. But uh, until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.